right guys i got a slug shootout for you today i've been wanting to do this video for a long time um i'm gonna post a link in the description i did a video uh last year i think it was uh doing long range with these uh rifled slugs with the smooth bore see how far we could shoot them and i managed to get them out to 200 yards uh fairly accurately uh but my scope took a crap on me so i got a new scope now um as I said, there'll be a link in the description of that video if you want to see these things go out 200 yards. And in that video, we were only just using your standard Winchester two and three quarter inch rifled slugs. But today, we're going to do an accuracy test. I have nine different slugs here lined up that we're going to test out. And some of them only have five a piece of. Uh, so I think I'm actually going to shoot four shot groups because I want to do ballistic gel testing with each one of these slugs and see what kind of damage each one of them do and I'm I'm thinking I'll probably make it a giant like just do it all in one video so uh, I'm going to do four shot groups because of that because I'm going to save a slug of each one so as I said there's nine total so we got the Brennicky KO slug here just the standard two and three quarter inch Brennicky KOs um these are separate for a reason because they're different than what's in these boxes here. Uh, so I got the Federal two and three quarter inch Magnum rifled slug. And I guess they're calling that a Magnum because it's one and one fourth ounce. And then these are the regular, same as this, only they're a one ounce slug. Okay, it doesn't say Magnum on there on these, it says Magnum on the shell. So these are standard one ounce, where these are the Magnums one and one quarter ounce. And then I got some three inch here, three inch magnum, one and a quarter ounce. Uh, then the Winchester, I got um, the standard uh, two and three quarter, one ounce. And I guess those are the same, okay. Yeah, that's still nine, so I guess I didn't need these set up here. I, I got extra of these, but so. Uh, and then we got the three inch one ounce by Winchester. And then over here for the Remingtons, standard two and three quarter inch one ounce slugger slugs. <sighs> these freaking stink bugs are landing on me. I hate these dang things. Then we got uh, the three inch version. Okay. So what do you get? 1560 velocity on that. And then. I know they listed it here somewhere. I thought it did. These are a little faster. So the three, oh, there it is. 1760 with a one ounce instead of 1560 with a one ounce. So we got your two and three quarter slugger, three uh, three inch slugger. And then these are, they're marking them as high velocity. These are also three inch shells. But instead of shooting a one ounce slug, it's seven eighths of an ounce at 1875. So anyways, that's nine different rifled slugs there we're going to test out for accuracy. The firearm I'm using is a Mossberg 500 with the 28-inch field barrel, which is ported, and I have an improved cylinder choke installed. I was debating what distance to do this at. Um, like I said, the video I linked in the description, I proved that it's easy to take them to 100 and even beyond. Because I went out to 200 yards without much difficulty. Uh, but obviously most people using rifled slugs and a smooth bore. They're going to be hunting at 100 yards or less. And a lot of people out there won't even take a shot if it's more than 50 or 60 yards. So uh, I don't think 50 yards is really a very good test for accuracy. Because I would consider that close range even for these. Um, at 100 yards, uh, some people won't even shoot one of these 100 yards like I said. And uh, also... Some of these are probably not going to be very accurate at 100 yards, and the point of aim is going to change from one shell to the next, so the point of aim change might be enough to make me miss my target at 100 yards. So I'm going to do uh, accuracy testing at 75 yards, so we'll do a happy medium there. We'll meet right in the middle. So these closest mounts here is 50, and that bigger one behind is 100, so we're going to be right in the middle there at 75 yards. I'm going to use these shooting C's down there uh, for the groupings, but I'm going to do a quick 50 yard zero on this guy and then we'll get started. All right, I got a 50 yard zero, so we should be ready to go. 
if you hear me panting, it's because dude was down here working when I showed up, even though they didn't have any signs posted. The thing that's really starting to irritate me about this range, they'll just be like closing down without any prior notice. Um, anyways, dude that runs the place told him I drove from pretty far away, which I did. So he pulled the tractor up, stopped mowing down there. Then he told me he'd give me an hour after I drove almost an hour just to be here. And I still got to drive an hour home. So, yeah, I think I'm going to be saying something about that. But anyways, if you hear me uh, breathing heavy, that's why. Because I'm going to be hitting record as soon as I run back up here from switching out targets. So anyways, we got 75 yard down there. I got two setups so we can do two different slugs at a time. Again, I'm zeroed at 50. And we'll be doing these accuracy tests at 75. Uh, let me get set up here and we'll get started. All right, with those big shooting seas down there and these big holes, you should be able to see it. I'm going to zoom you guys in on those targets. And then when we go swap them out each time, we'll take a quick look before we move on to the next one. So here we go. And I got to adjust this a little bit. So I'll just announce what it is and uh, probably even put it on screen for you guys too. All right. Hopefully that's good. All right, let's... Uh, I've always ran Winchester, so let's start with that. So first up, Winchester two and three quarter inch, one ounce rifled slugs. Guys, I'm pretty sure that first shot was me. I'm trying to do... I pulled it a little bit low. Yep. Yeah, I definitely pulled that first shot, so disregard that one. go so that's a decent little group put that first shot up there with the other ones where it should be because that was definitely me so now we're running the Winchester three inch one ounce slugs on the target on the left Right in the middle. Huh. All right, let me bring them up here. We'll examine them real quick and we'll move, uh, move on to the next set. All right, like I said, hard, I'm panting because I just ran up there and immediately hit record. So here's the first one. Like I said, I 100% pulled that shot. So there's our group there. These are what I used in the 200 yard video. So. No wonder I was hitting it out at 200 yards. That's a pretty dang good group for a smooth bore shotgun with rifled slugs. But then the three inch magnum version, I'm about 99% confident I got a good trigger pull on each one of these. You can see there's almost no left and right. It just made an up and down string. So even the same brand, just going from regular to a little extra gum powder, uh, maybe that's some inconsistency. Like, 
if we chronoed them, maybe some was faster and some was slower. So maybe there's more inconsistency there with the charge on the magnums. So maybe that's why we got it up and down string. Not sure. Either way, I knew as soon as I pulled the trigger that I most likely pulled that one, which I did, because you can see it's way out of place there. These ones I felt it got, uh, felt good about every release, and we just got it up and down string, so that's just how it prints. All right, we'll run all uh, we'll run all the Remingtons now. Then I'll probably go to Federal. So we're starting out here with the Remington Slugger, one ounce slug, two and three quarter inch show. Just your standard Remington Sluggers. That uh, hit way low right. So those are, uh, let me try another one. I think I'm gonna have to adjust for this slug. I don't know, try another shot. I really don't wanna ruin the group if that's. I'm gonna have to adjust this, hang on. Cause it's, it completely missed the target. It hit low right on that target. Uh, I gotta go foot left, almost foot up. I'm gonna have to remember this to set it back. All right, I made some adjustments, so hopefully we're on target. Yeah, so those have a vastly different point of aim then those Winchesters. I moved that scope a lot. I went uh, five inches left and seven inches up. Uh, if calculating for a hundred yards, even though this was, uh, even though this is 75. But let's try to finish this group then, since I got it on paper now. That's insane. That is the largest change in point of aim I've ever seen from one brand to the next. That is a massive difference. All right, so now let's try. That's a pretty tight group, though. They just hit a way different spot. So now we'll run the Remington Slugger 1 ounce 3 inch Magnum. Hopefully, these will hit about the same point that way I don't have to adjust the scope again now those ones are low left compared to the previous hopefully I don't hit my stand down there but I don't want to move it again to throw off the group I don't know guys, I think I'm gonna have to. That if I hit that stand, then this test is over. Let me bring it back a few clicks. Let's see here. Alright, that should have shifted it away enough to where we can see the group and also not hit my target. Here we go. All right, nice groups with those two. Let me go get them and we'll switch to the next set. All right, so that one minute's clear here and I made a huge adjustment to get on target. There's a decent group with the two and three quarter, uh, two and three quarter inch one ounce 
slugger by Remington. Then we hit here on the first shot with the three inch version of that. So I moved it a bunch again. And there's our group from that. So their three inch shoots about the same as their two and three quarter. And the Winchester did not. Remember we had that. Groups were comparable. Remember that was my fault. Except for the three inch Magnum. The Remington kept the same accuracy as it did with the two and three quarter inch. All right. Then the last one of the Remington was that <clears throat> high velocity slug of theirs, which was a three inch with a seven eighths of an ounce rifled slug. So those are way high, which kind of makes sense because they're high velocity, so they shoot flatter. So let me drop this down a bunch so we don't miss any over the target. That way we can get a, a, a grouping. All right, let's go for a group now. Now that it will be on paper for sure. Crazy how much the point of impact changes on these things from one to the next. That's why you definitely got to do this uh, with your own shotgun. You can't just buy a different slug and uh, assume that it's still going to be sighted in. You, you change it up even in the same brand. We're seeing here that there could be a massive difference of point of impact. Well, that was interesting. I brought it down quite a bit. It didn't drop very much, and now it's off to the left, so I'm not going to change anything. We'll keep going. Maybe they're not that accurate. Now that's a nice little group down there, so seem plenty accurate. Let's switch to these Brennicky KOs. We'll do those real quick. Again, these are just standard two and three quarter inch, uh, one ounce Brennicky KO slugs. Alright, I shouldn't have to adjust this one. I might have pulled that slightly left. We'll see where the rest of the group goes. My shoulder's getting a little twitchy from all those slug hits. Man, that one went right where I had the crosshair. We'll see. That was me again. Pulled slightly left and a little low, I think. Try to make this one count. That way I can say, yeah, for sure that was me or not. <laughs> no. See, I was going to say on that one, I thought I might have pulled a little left again, but that time it went off to the right, so that's just how they're printing. Well, let's go get them check them out all right there's those remington high velocity remember that first one and then i adjusted so this is your group here because i didn't want to miss the paper these were the braining keys but as i said on more than one shot i felt like i moved so i'm gonna say that this would group 
tighter than what you're seeing here. So I would say these group just as good as anything else that we've done so far. Like I said, my shoulder's getting a little twitchy, so it's affecting me a little bit. So I would say that that's a little bigger than it should be. I, I definitely believe, like I said, I stated, I think, on at least two shots, if not three, that I felt like it might have moved a little. So I'd give that a better grouping than that. All right, I'm going to try to straighten my crap out here so it ain't slinging any shots. So now we'll move on to Federal. So I'm going to run... The standard federal two and three quarter inch one ounce slug. Then we'll do the two and three quarter inch magnum, which is a one and one quarter ounce slug. All right, at least we don't got to mess with this one. Pretty close to center there. Same hole on that one as the first one. We got two touching. Oh, ho, ho. Three touching. That's our best group yet. Okay, then as I said, now we'll shoot the two and three quarter inch, but it's a one and one quarter ounce slug, which they label as a magnum due to the heavier slug, even though it's still a two and three quarter inch shell. Great. So I heard a hit, but I don't see nothing. So that one's way off somewhere. Let me zoom in on this. I don't see anything. There's a little nick at the bottom of the target. So maybe that's where we hit. So I'm going to bring it up on the scope. I know I'll just aim higher at that other dot down there. There's a dot at the top of that target that's several inches higher. I'll aim at that and see if we get a hit. Yeah, it's just like it's like it didn't even hit the target. It just blew right under the bottom of it and knocked some of that scratch off stuff off. But it's weird though because I heard a nick I heard a hit sound like it hit it, but I don't see the hit anywhere. Aim higher and hopefully we hit it. Yeah, there we go. So it was definitely low. Because that just hit lower than where I was aiming. But only by a few inches. So I'm not sure why that other one seem to miss we'll check it out i'll take the camera down there for a close-up when i'm done here wow these things are all over the place and low that one was way lower and way left same aim point
Everything, everything's still tight on my scope. Nothing's moving. So unless the scope is failing internally, which I really doubt, and I don't see anything crooked or nothing, I think those are uh, just very inaccurate out of this gun, at least. All right, there's those two. So this is the Federal two and three quarter inch with the one ounce slug. That's our tightest group yet, I think. I want to, <laughs> I wish I could say, hey, maybe I moved some, you know, maybe I did, maybe I didn't, but look, at, considering the next three were practically touching, I think I might have moved a little on that, so, either way, I think it's still our best group by a little bit, it's certainly our best four shot group, so, so far, those seem to be the best performer, and it might even perform better than that, because I might have moved a little on that one, and then these, man, the, the same thing, but, with the one and one quarter ounce slug, it was just all over the place. My first shot, this is what I was talking about. This small amount of damage right here is all I saw down there. And so, and that was aiming here. So then I started aiming here, and then we got these three shots. One here, one here, and then one back here. So we only got one more slug left to test, but I put two more targets down there just in case. The scope is in question. Like I said, I checked everything. It's all tight. Twisted left and right, forward and back. Everything's still tight. The base is still tight. These are still tight. Everything's still tight. So unless it's failed internally, and it is a brand new scope, I know that doesn't mean much, but uh, it should be fine. Um, by the way, assuming it is fine, haha, <laughs> it's a Tasco and it lived. So anyways, uh, in case this next one slings all over the place, which it might, because it's the same slug, it's just in a 3-inch version now. Uh, we'll go back to some uh, the Winchesters and print another group down there just to confirm whether or not it's the scope, if these are all over the place. Alright, so these are the last ones. The Federal 3-inch with the one and one quarter ounce slug. That one I might have pulled just a little bit left. And not just because that's where it printed, but because that's what I felt like I did. See if this one goes back in that group of the first two. Yeah. That was definitely a good shot, good release. So I don't think I pulled the third shot left. That's just what it's grouping. Now that's an acceptable group. Of course we'll go get it and look at it, but I think the scope's fine. All right, so there's our last target. I felt good about all the shots. I felt like the third one, I might've moved a little, which is why I voiced that. But then the last shot I felt 100% confident about and it hit the same spot practically. And I felt good about the first two shots which hit over here. So that's just the group we're getting with these. Which compared to everything else we've seen, that's pretty uh, standard tier right there. So scope's definitely good. No issues there. It, uh, I don't know. That's the same slug but with the 3 inch with more powder behind it out of my gun. Mossberg 500 ported. 28 inch uh, with the improved cylinder in there okay that's what I'm getting so I don't know something about the extra charge in my guns make 
makes that one and a quarter from federal more accurate than the two and three quarter of course there can be variances between lots and build dates and whatnot but that's what we got guys so i don't know about you guys but to me it seemed like other than the fact that each one was way off from the next so you definitely got to pick a shell and stick with it because if you switch brands or even to a different one within the same brand it's gonna change vastly apparently with 12 gauge slugs now if you shoot rifles it's usually not that big a difference certainly not at 75 yards but apparently in a smooth lore shotgun it's a huge difference from one to the next so uh but as i was saying i don't know about you guys but everything seemed to perform pretty much the same other than the huge difference of point of aim from one shell to the next except for we did have a couple that stood out the federal with the one ounce the two and three quarter inch with the one ounce uh seemed to pattern the best also because i was questioning whether or not i maybe pulled that one a little that's not bad either but you can see that's definitely a little tighter well you know that's about the same size as that but it's four shots instead of three that's about the same size again three shots instead of four though again and then that's about the same size too but again it was three shots instead of four remember i pulled that one and then over here on our three inches well obviously that one's horrible the Berenike, I said I felt like I was moving around a little on various shots. So that's probably giving just about the same group as the others if you shrink that down a little because I believe that was my fault. About the same size again. Yep. Because that one's omitted because we were almost off paper so I had to adjust. Again, that's three compared to four but same size. And then this one was the worst. The Winchester three inch one ounce slung them up and down uh, i don't know about nine inches there so this was the worst performer for us this was potentially the best the federal two and three quarter one ounce because it got about the same size group as all the others that performed good except for his four shots instead of three and i think i might have slung that one just a little bit so out of my Mossberg 500 with a 28 inch ported barrel with the improved cylinder, seems like you can't go wrong with any of them except for, where'd it go? And you know, I said that one was the worst, but it's probably tied for this. Okay, so the one on the left here was the Winchester 3 inch 1 ounce. The one on the right was the Federal 2 and 3 quarter inch with the 1 and 1 quarter ounce slug. The reason I just stated that these were a tie here was because, remember, the one on the right, my first shot was at that center red oval, and it went completely under the target, okay? And then I did not adjust the scope. I just simply aimed at the little red dot above the red oval, because I uh, guessed correctly that it was in fact low. And then it started printing where those three shots are. So if you count that first shot, that first shot missed where I was aiming by at least a foot low. Okay. Whereas the three shot group afterwards is only a few inches lower than where I was aiming at that little red circle at the top. So that tells me that if I'd aimed at that same little red circle at the top with all four of the shots, that one at the bottom there still would have been a lot lower than that three shot group there, uh, which would have opened that group up to about nine or 10 inches, just like the Winchesters on the left. Um, however, if you notice the Winchester on the left, it just slung them up and down. And as I believe I stated earlier in the video, Maybe that was an inconsistency in powder charge, like the top one had a higher velocity whereas the bottom one had a much lower velocity. And so that could potentially change from lot, one lot, one box to the next. So maybe I just got a bad lot there where they had inconsistent powder charges 
um, and maybe you get a better lot, a better box, and then you wouldn't have a 9 or 10 inch up and down inconsistent string due to the velocity, uh, which would make that one actually more accurate if that's the case. That wouldn't occur, or at least not as much, with the Federal on the right, because it didn't have a nice straight line like that. Uh, there was probably definitely some inconsistency in the charge because that one was extremely low, but you also have a left and right accuracy variance there as well. So um, in a way, they're a tie, but if you got more consistent Winchesters, um, it might actually group tighter. So I would say other than these two, everything seemed to do about the same, and we might have a slight edge with the standard one out slug from Federal. Again, that's where the Mossberg 28 inch ported with improved cylinder choke installed. So every gun's different, just like every one of these shells was different. Uh, you know, depending on your gun, if you have a shorter barrel, you might do better with one than the other. Uh, if you have a longer barrel, which believe it or not, there is some out there with longer than 28 inch, you might do better with one than the other. Um, if you're forced to use a different choke than improved cylinder, or maybe you have cylinder bore, you might do better with one and the other. But for me today, with my gun and the choke I have installed, those are our results. So it was a real fun video for me. I hope you guys enjoyed it too. I've been wanting to do that forever, and it took me a long time to get all these slugs gathered up. Uh, so if you enjoyed the video, please don't hesitate to hit the like button. Leave me a comment. Tell me what you think. Don't forget, as I said, I made sure to save at least one of each of these because I'm going to do a gel test coming up to see what each one does in gel. Um, also, don't forget to ch check the uh, link in the description for the 200-yard rifled slug video that I did last year. And also, as I mentioned earlier, don't forget that I'm doing the same test but in a a uh, few different sabbated slugs that I gathered as well from Winchester, Remington, Hornady, and I think there's a couple other. So uh, I got that coming up as well. So if you don't want to miss that, make sure you subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Thanks for watching.